This time on the show, automating interactive tasks in Linux, preventing your browser sessions from being tracked, graphical command line disk usage utilities, and pushing hex over TCP with Echo. All that and more, this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is your weekly dose of Technolist. Delicious, delicious hacking goodness, and I'm so excited about this week. I missed you guys oh. last week. Oh yeah, the South by Southwest stuff. You know, we got a yeah. lot of great response from that. It was fun to mix it up. Yeah, you know, I actually watched last week's episode mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it and it was very like down to earth and chill. It kind of remember reminded me of like the first season of Hack 5. Yeah. You know, just kind of like underground, sitting on the couch, hanging out. So it was totally cool. You I know, really enjoyed funny it. That you mentioned that we're actually making some changes to the season. Like we try to do on the mark of every season, but you know, it's always like within a couple episode range. Yeah, so what kind of changes are we, well, are we talking about? Well, I don't know. About? We're adding a second set. We're oh. doing more whiteboarding stuff here real soon. We're going to get into topical stuff and then try to hit lots of aspects of them. And then, Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Sounds a little bit more like a uh, learning experience. Well, it's going to be, of course, you know, as it always is, a learning experience as yeah. well as... I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be fun. We're going to experiment and try it. But we got cool stuff coming up. Like, we're going to be talking about Tor and proxies and GPG and... You know, disk encryption, big st tackling big stuff, and awesome. covering hopefully, like you know, giving a, so that you can walk away with it more than just like because sometimes it feels like we're just like, hey, whatever we did this week, that was awesome, yeah. which is cool, yeah. and we'll do more <laughs> of that. But I like the topical specials. I do too. Yeah, they they are very very interesting and in depth, and I really enjoy that. Today is not that kind of episode though, because we are like covering just weird stuff that has just shown up in our lives. Yeah, just recently. kind of yeah, interesting things, but yeah. um, important things to know. But first off, I did remind, want to remind everybody about the party that we are having on May 3rd. Um, it's still on, and I, I don't know what, how many, what age group has to go. We're going to check on that. I, I with think the, it's 18 up. I think. We'll talk to the, cause the restaurant you owner. You mean 21 because, up? No, 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 no. I think it's 18, 18 up. Oh, or actually, no, I guess it's all ages. See, I think it's all ages because it's, it's all a restaurant, ages. but yeah, it's, it's also a, a pub. So we have to check if, on that. We're having it at Baltic at Pub, time. and you can go to hack5.org slash 1111 to find the Facebook event. They have a special hot toddy there with some crazy German licorice Ooh. stuff. It's, it's good. Yum. It's good. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Oh, yummy. And I'm excited for that workshop this Friday, so I, I hope we'll have some footage. You mean last Friday. Yeah, last Friday. Last so Friday. I hope we have some footage from that for next week's Actually, episode. Actually, we will. I'm taking Paul when we go in two days yes. to last Friday. I'm going Sorry. too, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'm not going to miss it. Cool. All right. It'll, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, did we get any gifts from fans? Well, yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's really big. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to grab a couple of things out of the box. Mm. So I'll go ahead and grab Here's these for you. All right. I'll read off the letter. This is from Dale. And he said, I enjoy watching both of you on Hack 5. To get your Technolist going, I have sent you a is this Coleco Atom computer? A Coleco Atom Coleco computer. Coleco Atom computer. Circa <laughs> 1981. So this is from when I was before I was born. I personally was on the Commodore VIC-20, Commodore 64, and the Intel 8088 personal computer route, but adopted this Atom from a friend in the late 1990s. After seeing you unpack various memorabilia from other viewers, I felt Hack 5 would be the perfect Aww. home for this blast from the past that other viewers might enjoy seeing. That is wicked. So it's huge. We could take some pictures of it. Yeah. And also Ooh. are included two books, Computer Viruses, A High Tech <laughs> Disease, <laughs> an Assembly Language Primer for the IBM PC and XT. Okay. And some 5.25. That's my first computer. Discuss. That one the right XT? there. The XT? The XT. Wow. Yeah. So maybe That's I could break awesome. out my first computer and, oh, dude, look at this. I think I can, my dad had the Commodore or the IBM when I was a baby. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. I cannot read assembly. I should learn wow. assembly. Yeah. I'm, Inside the ROM. Ooh. That's some... Messing with the BIOS and 8088 instructions. Yes! Okay, that's cool. This is going <laughs> on the new set. Yeah. For sure. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Some of it. It might not all fit. <laughs> so what's going on that. today? 
Well, get this. Uh, we're talking about a couple of things that I've run into recently as I've been doing some other crazy work stuff and uh, discovered an awesome way to do automation of Linux tasks that are interactive. Uh, I talked about it previously using a tool called Expect, which yeah. uh, uses uh, T TCL as a dependency. This is an awesome new tool that, uh, uh, not new, new, it's new to me, that allows <laughs> you to do just that, just uh, be able to interactively uh, automate stuff with processes. Nice. And it's pretty cool for, like, any Linux guy needs to know this, and especially when dealing with embedded systems where you don't have the kind of, like, you know, you've got, like, very small overhead. And, yeah. You know, so that's... Uh, yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I came about that. And also, I got a great nibble. I, I think it's actually more than... It's like the whole... I wish I could get into the entire process of it because um, it was a lot bigger of an experience. But the one thing that I took away from that, and, and that is hacking into a friend's um, home automation system and breaking into their house, was... Awesome. Um, uh, was just the, this really cool. You'll see. It's we're, we're I reverse engineered my first uh, protocol. Oh, cool! Yeah. man, that's exciting. Yeah, I know. It was All really, right. really cool. Very proud of you. Yes, thank you. Okay, well, this week I am uh, checking out a privacy protection tool that's super, super easy to set up. So I'll check that out next uh, Ooh, next block. I, I got something to add to that too, but yeah? we'll talk about that in the C block. All right, cool. Until then, let's talk about empty. I know it's an empty segment. Why don't we why don't we empty that side of the All set? All right, huh? I'm out of here. All right, cool. <laughs> well, like as I said, um, empty is, is a tool that you can use instead of expect. And from empty's SourceForge page, they describe it at sf or empty.sf.net as a utility that provides an interact provides an interface to execute and interact with the process under what they call pseudo terminal sessions. So this is pretty cool because you know you can use this program to um, to script shell to, to create shell scripts which communicate with interactive processes like Telnet or FTP or SSH. And while you know I said TCL expect can do pretty much the same thing, um, empty is maybe a better choice because it can be invoked directly from the shell. It doesn't require TCL or Perl or Python or any other language. It's super small, simple, and clean, and it's already been ported to most flavors of Unix. So uh, installation, really simple. You know, you just go to the download site, uh, SF, or what is it, uh, empty.sf.net, download the tarball, untar it, make all install clean, whatever. Or you could just grab it from your repo, and in this case, like in Ubuntu, it's a matter of sudo apt get install uh, empty-expect is the name of the package. All right, so the cool thing about the way that it works is that everything is based on files. So I'm going to go ahead and show you by starting an interactive process, and we'll take a look at the files within. So for that, we're going to need a, a new script. So I'll do cat eof and then send that to a file that we're going to call, I don't know, empty.sh. We'll begin that with a shebang slash bin slash bash, and now we can go ahead and create our empty script. So the first thing we need to do is start the process with empty, tack f, and then we need to say specify an input file and an output file. So tack i, and we're going to call this input.fifo, and then tack o for our output file, and we'll call it output.fifo. And then we can also specify a PID or a process ID into a file in case we want to be able to like, you know, have like multiple ones of these going and kind of keep track of everything a little bit easier. You don't have to specify this. If you don't, it's just going to create its own PID. But um, this is just a nice way to keep track of stuff. So I'm going to call that empty.pid. And then tack capital L is where we can put a log file. And this is great for debugging and, and all sorts of good stuff. Because the beauty of all of this is that now we can use you know, our great friends like Sed and Awk and Grep and all of those others to deal with these interactive processes. And because everything is an input file or an output file, it makes it really easy to process. So tack L for our log. We'll call it empty.log and then our command. And in this case, it's going to be ssh uh, darren at localhost. We'll just do that as an interactive example. So our next line is going to kind of give you an idea of how we can wait for different events to happen and then respond to them. So in this case, the first thing that we've done is we spawned a session that does an SSH to the local host with the username Darren. And 
first thing that we might see is actually um, a prompt if we want to continue if say that host isn't in our known hosts. So for that, what we'll do is empty. And then in this case, since it's already created with TACF, we are doing TACW to watch for. And this is where it's all gonna make sense. TAC I, the input file in this case is actually the output file from the previous uh, command. So our TAC I will be output.fifo. Our input will be input, or will be, um, our output will be input.fifo. And then what we do here is we specify what we're looking for and our response. So in this case, we know we're gonna see the word continue because it's gonna prompt us, hey, do you wanna continue connecting to this host? And what we're going to say is, in single quotes, yes, and then to do a carriage return or an enter or a new line or a line feed or whatever you wanna call it, we do a backslash n and end our quote. All right, so at that point, it should be asking us for a password so we'll just do, just like before, empty, tac w, tac i, the output file, tac o, the input file, and then in this case, we're not sure if it's going to be a capital P or a lowercase p for password, so why don't we just use assword? <laughs> yeah, I just said assword. And then in this case, our password. In this case, I've set it to lame password, and then we want to hit enter, so another backslash n and, and uh, leave that there. Now, okay, before you send me a ton of email, yes, I know SSH key pairs, RSA, DSA, all the good stuff. We will be talking about that very shortly here. I know that we have in the past. Sometimes I get lazy. Uh, this is not secure. Take it as that, but this is a good interactive example. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue with that. So anyway, at this point now, we're going to be logged into, in this case, just localhost, and now we can go ahead and run something on what would be you know, our server somewhere. So empty, again, tacw, tacI, output.fifo, our, uh, our output will be input.fifo, because what we're doing is we're checking the output of this session, and when we see what we want, we put it into the input. So these two files are acting as like standard input and output, just like you would with piping and bash, which is so cool. Um, so our output is input.fifo, and then in this case, we're going to see, I don't know, the word Darren at, because, uh, you know, or just Darren, because we know that that's who we're logged in as, and we'll run top, because that's a fun thing to run. So just top backslash n, there we go. I'm gonna do an EOF to save this file. And if I chmod that with plus x for execute, now we've got our empty script file and it's all set to be executed. So if I just do dot slash empty and I'm gonna open a new window here, come back here. Okay, so I'm running empty and you see that this process is now running. I didn't put an ampersand at the end of it so it's not in the background. If I come over to my new tab and ls empty star, you'll see there's my empty.sh there's my empty.log, and if I cat empty.log, you can see that it, just like I expected, it says that it didn't have localhost in there. Here's the fingerprint. Are you sure you want to connect? It hit Y and hit enter, and it did not get a response. Why is that? Well, look at this. We can see that our next two empty strings said that the uh, this data stream is empty. The key phrase, which is what we're looking for in this case, the word continue, the word ass word, the word Darren, wasn't found, so it times out. And there's actually a way to specify the timeout. Uh, the reason that this failed was because I did not account for the fact that in this distribution, you have to type Y-E-S and not just Y. It changes on a distro by distro basis. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, pop into, actually I'll pop into Nano, give Nano some love. Been using Vi and Vim too li much lately. Um, our file empty here, .sh, and if you've been following along, you already know all I have to do is come in here and change this Y to yes. Save that file. All right, and now let's run it again. We'll, uh, we'll even, Go ahead and uh, delete this log file. Dell, what am I in DOS? RM uh, empty.log. And if I run my empty script now, you can see it's doing its thing, it finished. And now if I cat empty.log, 
There is my top command because it went ahead and it typed YES this time. Logged right in. I know it's not the best for security in that sense, but you can imagine how with other interactive processes, this can be a total lifesaver. And I like it just because I don't have the overhead and dependencies of having to use TCL. It's its own small script that I can then go ahead and use regular text processors, which I'm already used to working with, like SET and AUK and all those other fun ones. Um, now stay tuned because in just a bit, Shannon's gonna be checking out this awesome tool for basically protecting your privacy online. But first, we're gonna take a quick break. It doesn't matter whether you're in the shower or hanging out with friends or showering with your friends. When a killer idea hits you, you need to snag your domain fast. And with domain.com simple search and checkout process, you're gonna have that domain in like no time. Plus, when you're ready to take the next step, domain.com has rock solid hosting infrastructure to create a perfect foundation for your project. And get this, the guys over at domain.com, they're huge Hack5 fans. They wanna hook you up. So they've got a coupon code just for us. It's HAK5 at checkout. Gets you 15% off. So when you think domains, think domain.com.